It's going good. It's uh, about 2.40 right now. We got in about 15 minutes ago, and that trek only took us basically exactly five hours, and navigation was spot on. Um, there's a lot of sandy trails, and there's a lot of trails that weren't on the map, and you really had to pay attention to the map and compass the whole time. Uh, I had some low moments every now and then, but Jess and I just kind of had a quick jog pace the whole time, and we just pushed through it, and yeah, we're actually quite surprised that we uh, made up all that ground, and we came the first team in here. After a lengthy trek through the wilds of the Ocala National Forest, teams arrived at the Clearwater Recreation Area. Here, they faced an optional single-track bike loop. While lengthy, it contained multiple checkpoints. And despite battling the sleep monsters, lead teams chose to venture out and hit the trail. A little slow today, if you can tell. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should have slept, huh? As day two dawned, all racers were on their bikes, heading westward over a series of paved, gravel, and technical sugar sand trails. Absolutely gorgeous. This long segment featured many scattered checkpoints, and careful navigation was required to ensure teams did not zoom past a secondary trail or miss a quick bushwhack down a remote location. A lot of biking. How are the bikes? They're, doing, they're holding up fine. We've been biking since like what, 3 a.m. So. After 10 to 12 hours on their bikes, teams arrived at the Sunny Hill Restoration Area. This would be the start of a lengthy trekking loop that would take racers on and off trail to numerous scattered checkpoints. Attack strategy was crucial to ensure teams could reach as many possible checkpoints before the next cutoff. As the day wore on, fatigue began to take hold of racers. Many teams had been on the go for over 30 hours, and the trek leg through the hot sun brought upon the sleep monsters. For some, they just needed to stop and rest. But at one point as we were coming back, looking at the map, we looked like there was a land bridge across the canal. Uh, we get to the edge of the canal and there's no land bridge. So we swam through an alligator infested canal and we're fine, we have all toes and fingers. So yeah, it's probably a bit like swamp, but it was good. Uh, we are from Colombia. We are gonna paddle 19 miles and hopefully we can have a good one right now. As teams filtered back to the transition area for the paddle section, they were greeted by a fury of emergency services. A tracker had malfunctioned and alerted search and rescue, so teams were held off the water until further notice. This granted a brief sleep with time credits applied for those who were ready for the next leg. The race is right where we expect the race to be right now, and teams are moving at the same pace that, we're hope that we were hoping that they'd move at. We've had a few little hiccups and some rescues, and that's, that's actually normal. We're, we know that we're gonna have some rescues and some rescues later on. One, one person team had the wrong way on the river, paddled for two hours, realized their mistake, have to turn around and paddle back, and then do the leg that they just, four hours of extra paddling before they even started what they had to do, which was already a long paddle. With the safe conclusion of the search and rescue, teams were allowed to hit the water and commenced a long and dark paddle down the Oklawaha River. <laughs> 